Hi guys, hope all is well. Today I'll be carving one of my favorite carvings, a small bear. I've made a couple of these already with about the same pose. This one is carved out of poplar, and this one is carved out of mahogany. In this video I'll show you the step-by-step -step on how I make these with just a Dremel rotary tool and a few bits and burrs. I'm starting out with this block of hardwood and I've glued down a bear template on each side of the block to get the outline of the carving. And we'll start out with the Dremel 561 multi-purpose cutting bit to get the 2D outline of the bear. I'm using a Dremel flex shaft mounted to a Dremel 4300 for this project, but any high speed rotary tool should work just fine. For wood carving such as this, I generally keep the tool between 20 and 25,000 RPM. I like to do a lot of quick shallow passes with the 561 to get a consistent line and not stress the tool too much. At this point in the carving, we're really just trying to get a close 2D outline of the bear, so I don't do any shaping yet. Once we get the blocks off from around the body and the head of the bear, we can tackle the legs. I start the legs with marking where the midline is, and I block off the bottom of the carving so I know where each leg will be. I also like to put X's on each block that I'll be removing so I don't accidentally carve away where a leg should be. Here I'm also putting X's on the sides of the block just to make sure. I use the 561 to make cuts at multiple angles until the block can be popped off. And I'm still following the glued on template here so I keep the carving very blocky without any shaping. After getting the general 2D shape, I stay with the 561 to carve away any rough pieces around the legs, the back, the head, and finally the tail. Now that the shape is clean, we can remove the template. I'll be using this Cutsall Extreme Flame Bear to carve it off. This part's always one of my favorites since you can really see the nice grain of this canary wood. We can finally start shaping, so before I start carving, I like to make some curved marks for the legs. Mark where the ears will be. I add a midline to the back to make sure I keep the rounding symmetrical. And I draw the top of the head, which I'm giving a slight sideways tilt for this carving. I'll start carving in the curves with the Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr. Here I'm going into the neck and then between the legs and on the side of the body. Then I began rounding the back of the bear. And I also rounded one of the legs. I carved in a slight V-shape for the tail and then continued to shape the other side of the bear and began to carve away any hard edges around the body and the legs. By the way, we recently hit 2,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for being here and contributing to this channel. It really means a lot to me, and I love reading the comments since I get a lot of them uh, with some really good tips and tricks on how to improve my carvings. So if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more wood carving videos like this one. So far on this channel, I've mostly just been using this Dremel, so I'm curious about trying an angle grinder with a shaping disc to try to carve some larger pieces, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Anyways, back to the video. Now that the feet are fairly round and consistent and the body is roughly shaped, we can start on carving the head. I like to save the head for the end since I think it's the most difficult part to carve. I start around the snout and then carve small amounts below and around the ears, and then I continuously mark up the head with a pen and then carve some more. Here I'm using my last bear carving as a reference and then carving the curve of the top of the snout. I then carved the groove of the top of the neck, as well as behind the ears, and I rounded off the top of the head.
I like the rough shape here, so I moved on to the tungsten carbide cutting burr since it's much less aggressive than the cut saw, so I can add detail which ends up much more smooth and it makes sanding easier later on. It's also great to sharpen the grooves around the legs a bit. And to get a sharper angle between the legs and the belly, I'm also using it here to finish up the shaping of the ears. This is the last real carving step, so make sure to try to not leave too many deep tool marks in the wood. Alright, let's get to sanding. I have this homemade 200 grit sanding wheel to start. I usually like to sand at about 15,000 RPM. I realized though that it was a bit too rough to start using the 200 grit, so I switched to a sanding drum that's 60 grit. Here I'm really just trying to get any deep scratches out of the wood that I made while I was carving. And I'm also using the coarse sanding drum to further round off any hard edges. The drum shape is nice for these animal carvings since it fits with most grooves, such as between the legs and the curves of the feet. It also worked well with shaping the tail. I then used it to round off the legs just a little more. I was pretty satisfied with the rough sanding, so I went back with the 200 grit sanding disc and I sanded as much as I could. The sanding disc is a bit annoying since it doesn't fit well between the legs or in any small places, so they wear up pretty quickly and I ended up going through a lot of them. I have a different video where I show how to make these new sanding discs, so you don't have to keep buying them if you're interested in checking that out. The sanding up to 200 grit was done, so it was time to use the polishing wheels. These gave a really nice final finish on the wood, and they're able to reach pretty much any part of the carving. This one's about 160 grit, and I dropped down to 10,000 RPM when I use these so they don't fall apart, since they're pretty fragile. By the way, all these accessories I'm using are linked in the description below. There were a couple deep scratches on the chest that I couldn't polish out, so I used one of these silicone carbide grinding stones at 10,000 RPM to try and grind out the scratches before returning to the polishing wheel. I also used this larger grinding stone on the chest and on the curves of the feet since they also had some tool marks. After grinding out the tool marks, I went over the whole thing again with a 400 grit polishing wheel and then I soaked the whole bear in water for a couple seconds and let it air dry for about an hour to let the grain raise. You can't really see it on the video, but after soaking it you can really feel, especially on the end grain, some roughness, so I really recommend raising the grain before oiling. I gave it one more pass with the polishing wheel to finish the sanding, and I engraved my initials and the year onto the feet since this will be a gift for someone special. The last step I like doing before oiling is sanding it with a thousand grit sandpaper just to give it a little extra shine for what it's complete. Okay, here's the final carving, silky smooth. I'll be using this Howard's Butcher Block Conditioner, which is just mineral oil and beeswax since I like the additional wax to make the final product a little shiny. I put on a pretty hefty amount since it's a thick carving and I spread it with a paper towel. Well here's the inspiration slash model for this carving. And here's the final product. The wax gave it a really nice shine, and the grain is really pretty. I used canary wood that I got from a local exotic hardwood store, which has this really cool yellow color with red stripes, as well as a deep red color around the feet. You can use any wood for these carvings though, I just wouldn't recommend using softwoods like pine since they'll splinter and be quite the pain to carve. 
This video was meant to go out a while ago, but here's the bear a couple months later. It still looks really nice and colorful, although it's a bit darker since the wood oxidizes over time. I'm overall super happy with this project. I love carving these bears since there's nothing fragile so they won't break when you're carving them, and they shouldn't break once you finish them. Well, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks again for 2,000 subscribers. If you're new here, feel free to join the club. Please drop a like and comment what you'd like to see next, and I will see you next time.